Hollywood wants to ban critical drinker and YouTube critics. Let's see what he, this guy has to say. So I wasn't going to talk about any YouTube movie critics for a while, as I had just wrapped up my three-part series on The Critical Drinker last week. However, recent articles have forced me into speaking out, because while this won't be my most well-edited or longest video that I've made, it's definitely going to be one of my most important, because I really feel passionate about this topic. I think everyone is pretty passionate about this topic in terms of... Uh, um, movies, even in video games and anime, is because that's our escapism. I think our escapism is key and it's, it's vital, especially during COVID, right? The past four years, well, at least uh, back in two, uh, 2023, 2022, uh, a lot of people were basically shut into their own homes and were not allowed to go out into the public. And if you did, you're either um, some kind of um, crazy radical right-wing extremist or you're a freaking um, science denier, right? So a lot of people needed to go out and whenever they couldn't, they stayed home and watched a lot of movies. And that's when you saw a lot of, a lot of crappy movies. The rise of crappy movies actually came up, right? A lot of really, really bad ones. The first and foremost was Mulan. That one's really awful, but let's continue and see what this guy has to say. Because sadly, I'm starting to notice a massive shift in the Hollywood blame game that I think is utterly ridiculous. Because Hollywood has seemingly gone from blaming toxic fans for failures to now targeting online movie critics. Because as you all know, just a month ago, I covered how somehow critics like The Critical Drinker and Nerd Roddick were being blamed for Madam Web's failure. And now... <laughs> Uh, Madam Web's failure is, is because it sucked ass, all right? I watched that movie. It was a waste of time, waste of money. Holy crap, the movie was a misdirect. It was awful. The movie, it just fucking sucked. That movie was made for nobody. That movie was made for no one, right? Holy crap, dude. Like, th th like pe people were actually blaming Critical Drinker and Erotic on the fail of Madam Web needs to actually go watch the movies themselves. Right, it was so bad that Chris Stuckman didn't even make a video. He did not even make a review video on it because it sucked that much balls. But let's continue. What's going on, Alec Baldwin's finger? Hope you're doing well, man. Hope you're doing well. All right, let's continue. Now we're getting more articles come from the entertainment industry that are choosing to attack content creators from articles of actors blaming online criticism for their career downfall. And while I don't know what this specific article is about, and I am a fan of Anne Hathaway, I'm just using this as an example. And we're also <laughs> getting other articles targeting the so-called review bombing of movies to now gaming companies threatening legal action. Wait, this is Mark Kern, as SBI style consulting company black girl gamers threaten legal action over that park place gaming website over defamatory allegations they go to say they will pursue legal action against anyone who links to that park places article or spreads it in any manner <laughs> that's hilarious dude that is that is freaking funny my face is getting blown out against content creators for reporting a negative story about the company that apparently is true and they're quoting real Death sources Dispere. and real articles that have come out about this company yet they're still threatening to sue these very content creators and just because that is a legal situation i think i should add that i don't know all the details i'm just saying it's reportedly true but what is definitely true is that they're they're coming out and saying that they will threaten to sue content creators for making a video and reporting on articles that have come out about that company. Come on, pug. Judge me now, sue. Jesus. Yeah, some people are actually insane. And I'd say that this <laughs> shift is happening in the overall entertainment industry because Hollywood now understands that attacking the very people that you want to watch your movies is an utterly dumb idea and is only going to aggravate the audience and result in you losing more money, yet they still for some reason don't want to take any sort of accountability and are looking for more people to shift the blame towards, and now they've settled on the idea of attacking online movie criticism 
criticism coming from people like the Critical Drinker, like Nerd Roddick, like Jeremy Jans. They're choosing to attack these people because they view this as an easier scapegoat and an easier way to blame their failures on someone else without aggravating the audience that they're choosing to make these movies for. However, why this is still a very dumb idea is because you're now attacking people that the fans of your movies listen to, respect, and watch on a daily basis, so you're also going to aggravate the very people that you're trying not to aggravate now, so you're probably going to lose more money through this new strategy than you were before. So once again, they've settled on a downright stupid idea. And Absolutely. Now, here's the thing. Um, like I said before on Project Agro, uh, comic book movies primarily um, their their demographic is like eighty five percent male, and if you are making movies for your demographic, whoa, whoa, G G Whitakers, right? Like you're supposed to make a lot of money, right? Like for instance, um, uh, what's it called again? Uh, who is a good person that makes movies only catered to specific people like i would say i would say uh what's it called again uh, who, who who's that guy tyler perry tyler perry is a very very good example of he knows exactly who his demographic is he knows exactly who his audience is and so what he does is he makes sure that he makes movies caters catering to the freaking demographic and his fan base Right? Imagine if all of a sudden Tyler Perry came out and was like, you know what? I'm gonna make I'm gonna make movie for white people all of a sudden. It's <laughs> it's so simple, right? So the reason why dis they're showing a lot of Disney stuff and some Marvel stuff, right? The reason why they're failing is because, hey, remember that one time when we used to make movies for men? Let's change it up and make movies for women moving forward. It's like, I'm not saying that women cannot enjoy men movies and vice versa, but I'm talking about if your demographic is primarily male and heavily male dominated and you make changes that tells them they're pieces of shit, your movie just going to suck. But the thing is that what's worse is that these movie, when even when not woke, like the Marvels is actually not really woke. There's not a lot of woke shit in it. But the thing is that that thing just sucked. It's awful. It was made for no one. It was made for people who just think that, oh, I, I, I'm just going to attach the Marvel branding on it and then the movie's going to make a billion dollars. It's like, no, it's bitch. That's not going to happen. And now this shift has been gradual as the critical drinker started being blamed just over two years ago, where I think there was a Forbes article that highlighted one of his videos saying that that somehow damaged the reputation of Rings of Power and was part of the reason that that series failed. When as we all know, <laughs> Rings of Power just wasn't on the same level as the original Lord of the Rings movies. Now here's the thing, the Rings of Power wasn't even on the same level as the Hobbit trilogy. And now that's saying something. The Hobbit trilogy at least felt like you're part of the token Peter Jackson universe. It's because it was directed by Peter Jackson. But this one didn't even feel anything remote towards how Tolkien and his uh, and Peter Jackson's uh, movies were. It just wasn't. This just feels like shitty fan fiction. And, but the thing is that calling this shitty fact. Uh, fan fiction is actually a disservice to people who write fan fiction because I'm pretty sure people who write fan fiction could come up with something way better than this car, uh, this freaking garbage, man. Let's continue. Overall, people didn't like it, and he wasn't the only critic that voiced complaints around that show. As pretty much <laughs> most critics armor. Out there said that this show wasn't great, yet they chose to target him because it seemed like an easy scapegoat. So that all started to happen just over two years ago. However, now it's really ramping up, and that's why I feel that I have to say something as both a movie fan and an online movie critic myself. Because like like I've already said, attacking YouTube movie critics is an easy scapegoat. However, the reality is that if people didn't agree with these 
online critics, they wouldn't have the following that they exactly. have. And therefore, they wouldn't be important enough to try and blame them for your failures. So clearly, YouTube critics are saying something right and are clearly resonating with fans. And fans are agreeing with people like the Critical Drinker and Jeremy Johns because they're saying things that ring true and they're speaking from the opinion of the audiences of these movies and shows. Now here's the thing, uh, that, 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 I'm pretty sure that is uh, a female's ass, so that's a nice ass. But the thing is, um, whether or not these cri these actual Hollywood critics believe uh, in what the YouTube critics are saying, like i.e. Jeremy Johns, uh, a nerd Roddick, uh, anywhere, anyone from G and G uh, and Critical Drinker, whether or not they agree, they have, they have the right to voice whether or not the movie sucked, right? So I don't know why these people are just oh yeah, this this freaking uh, this, these people are just crybabies. Uh, they, they, they don't know what they're talking about. It's like no. Um, the thing is, uh, I'm pretty sure, you know, Nerd Roddick has decades, m multiple decades of comic book film knowledge and the critical drinker isn't he he's a writer isn't he like he's a writer he has several books and isn't he has like a short film that's coming out or something but the thing is that no you guys don't know what you're talking about us girls and us woke pieces of shit in hollywood we know what you guys want so we will make product for you and just consume product and i hate that shit man so these critics should be seen as a streamlined view of what fans are thinking and studios should really listen to these critics and try and take on some of their opinions and while I'm not saying they should only listen to these critics and do everything that they say as of course they need to think for themselves as well however you do need to listen to this criticism especially when it's getting millions of views because clearly that's what the audience is thinking there it is a lot of the time, the criticism around these shows and movies revolves around the storytelling, revolves around the pacing, the beats, tangible filmmaking elements that make for a good series or a good movie. So why not listen to that and try and implement that in your next few films? Because clearly big budget movies as of late haven't been as good as they were just a few years ago. And that's got nothing to do with any sort of toxic fan. And that's got nothing to do with any sort of hatred or bigotry it has a lot more to do with the simple fact that the stories aren't as good so why not listen to the very people that you make these stories for because of hubris is because they feel like now here's the thing um the mcu started back in 07 07 right and it's been going for over a decade now and they feel like um when i say they i'm talking about the pe then these new writers these new directors these these uh dei diversity hires that when they come in they feel like whatever they work on as long as it has a marvel attached to it as a, as long as i have a disney attached to it star wars lucasfilm whatever it may be as long as it has that attached to it they can't fail but the, the thing is a lot of those people who wrote a lot of those cool shit, basically, they're no longer in Hollywood or they moved on to different projects, right? So if that's the case, then, then what is left are basically these diversity hires. And when the movie fails, they're like, well, it can't be me. It's because every subsequent movie that came out, it's it's, it's been really, really successful. And it it's not me that's out of touch. It's the fan base that's out of touch. It's the freaking audience that's out of touch, right? Why am I not playing the demo? Because I'm watching this video. Oh because I do think that an What's underlying on, reason for why these Hollywood studios dismiss this online criticism so much is because they view these YouTube critics as just idiots in a basement who know nothing about storytelling and are just speaking out of their ass and they shouldn't pay them any attention. However, to succeed in any endeavor requires you to have some talent and a lot of hard work behind it. And so the reason that the critical drinker and Jeremy Jones 
Khans have these big followings and have succeeded on YouTube is because they know what they're talking about. They're not just some random idiot saying anything they want, they're good at their job and that's why people follow them because they say things that resonate with audiences. Now here's the thing, see a random idiot, he's talking about me, all right? So here's the thing, I'm not extremely well versed in a lot of these like like comic book movies and stuff like that i'm a normie normal ass enjoyer right i'm a normal dick right i have normal sized penis and the thing is what my wheelhouse is is video games right so um and anime so video games and anime is my wheelhouse the thing is even me being a bitch ass bitch normie is not enjoying what i'm seeing that's saying something Right. If you cannot cater to normal size, like, you know, normal for an Asian. So, um, yeah, uh, the, the thing is, if it cannot cater to normal people, then you have lost your actual like your mess or whatever message or whatever you did it just is it's failing. Right. If it cannot cater to normal ass folks like me. Right. A bitch ass bitch, normal person like me, then it's going to suck. So but the thing is. Make something that's. If you make something that caters to everyone, it's going to cater to no one. Let's continue. And so given the fact that the critical drinker can bring in more people per YouTube video than a lot of big budget Marvel productions bring into the cinema, clearly he knows a thing or two about crafting a good narrative, entertaining audiences, and building a good rapport with his fans. So why not learn from that? Why not listen? Clearly he knows what he's talking about, and he doesn't just make YouTube videos. He also writes novels, which are- there it is sellers on Amazon and also is now making a short film so he knows there how to is. craft a story he's not just an idiot from a basement that's he me actually has skin in the game and knows a thing or two about the storytelling industry and so as a movie fan and critic myself I just want an industry that can work with one another I just don't see why movie creators should hate critics and why critics should hate movie creators I honestly feel that we both need each other and should learn from one another because Hollywood studios should take feedback on board from critics and all critics should try and do is hold movies accountable and push an industry that we all love to be at the highest standard possible and to continue to grow and unfortunately YouTube has become one of the few Ron Tomatoes under fire as report claims PR for manipulated review score Oh man, we've this 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 has been happening for a while now, especially when Captain Marvel One came out. It's been happening for a while, so uh, yeah, like uh, you love to see it, man, and you love to see when shitty movies fail, woke movies fail. We love it places where you can find real honest criticism as I don't follow critics based on if I agree with every single point they make I follow critics based on whether or not I feel they're telling the truth and whether or not they're just being honest about their opinion and that's why I watch people from John Campier to the critical drinker to Jeremy Johns to yeah. Robert Ryan Burnett I watch people of all different opinions who sometimes have opinions that clash but that's a good thing because they're just being honest and I'd hate to see an industry that I love so much try to eradicate honest feedback and try to eradicate true criticism because movie criticism has been around since the time that movies began. So I just feel like it's my job to speak out and fight for honest movie criticism when I see the rise of attacking critics online because it's just so dumb and I just see no merit in that argument. But what are your thoughts on this? Let me know down below in the comments. If you like the video, please hit the like button, hit good the video. subscribe button, and I'll see you all on my next video. That's a good video. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with everything he says. Whether or not you agree with someone, they have the right to say it. And whether I'm going to give a thumbs up and I'm going to subscribe to this guy. Um, and the thing is, it's okay if your movie sucks. It's because that's a way for you to learn from it, right? That's a way for you to actually learn. I'm going to share this right over here. I'm sure I'm sharing the chat. So go ahead and give this guy a um, a like, subscribe, or whatever. Yeah, uh, it's a good video. Good ass video.
Oh, uh, let's see. Where's my other one? Uh, there it is. There it is. There we go. Yeah, go. Yeah, go ahead and, uh, and follow him and subscribe and stuff like that. Yeah, um, I agree. Uh, the thing is that a lot people in Hollywood don't know when to learn. It's because they don't know how. It's because they never, they were never taught. They were sp they, they, these fucking participation trophy creators. are basically, it's like, oh, my movie should be good. Is because you know I'm participating in it. So give me money and then let me be on this uh, other show and movie and and ruin people's childhood. And it's exactly what's happening. So I would say, if Hollywood actually listened, watched why we as uh, uh critics and we as fans and moviegoers or you know content consumers are giving you guys flack for shitty stuff is because it sucks learn from it and make better stuff that's it is that simple right it's 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 not rocket science dude just just get good <laughs>